Hey, hey, what's up? Okay, so, uh, this is going to be, I think, my third set of trust videos. I'm going to, uh, do a little bit on trust. I'm going, well, yeah, I'm going to solve a trust with you guys. And, uh, I'm also going to, uh, at the end, we're going to check our work using some torque calculations. And I'm going to try to explain them. It's really not as bad as it sounds. Some of the, uh, um, there is absolutely zero complicated math. It, there's no sines, there's no cosines, it's a, it's literally multiplying things and adding things. Um, it's just the way that it's explained that can be confusing. But um, hopefully the way that I do it is going to make sense. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm going to start off with the, um, the trust that uh, we did today. Basically, I think, I think it was day one for, I think, everyone in, uh, in class in Poe. Maybe other classes covered it earlier because Dr. Agarwal went ahead or something, I'm not sure, but I certainly know that in our class it was basically never covered. <laughs> um, and from what I've heard about the other classes, that's true there too. So I'm going to try to cover uh, how, to, uh, how to check our work with torque. But uh, let's start off. Um, this is going to be our truss. And uh, this is going to be our, it's going to be the ground, but it's not the ground. It's like a building kind of thing. Um, but since we're not actually including gravity as any of the forces, as one of the forces involved in anything, uh, surprisingly enough, it doesn't matter if something is, um, whether something is um, sideways or not. You could flip the whole truss upside down. And as long as the forces are still going in the same direction, there is absolutely no change. And that's just because um, because of the way that he tells us that we don't need to worry about the gravity, which it kind of makes all of our work uh, a little bit easier. So um, here I am. I'm working through the trust. I'm working on drawing in that trust that uh, he gave us, making everything even and all that. Um, and let's see what load did he give us. He said that. Oh, um, the load that he tells us is, uh, 5 here and 7 here. It's in, I'll, I'll draw those in a sec, but he says that it's in, uh, I think, uh, it was kilonewtons, um, and that might be a bit of an unfamiliar, uh, unit for a lot of people. Uh, don't let the unit scare you. Same with, same thing if he uses some weird, like, I don't know, pound, kilopounds or something. I know that's not at all correct. Um, or if he just whatever units he uses, don't let them scare you, because the units have zero effect whatsoever on the actual math that we're doing. Okay, uh, it could be in a completely made-up unit system, but as long as we do the math right. Uh, uh, nothing will go wrong because uh, it, it's just like if you're measuring in feet or meters as long as you calculate the speed in feet or meters bas basically you just don't have to worry about uh, the, the newtons I, I mean about the, uh, the units because the units basically don't really matter you can just solve the truss with numbers and then throw the units in at the end okay so what forces uh, do we have going on here? Well, we've got one force pulling downward here, and we've got one force pulling downward here, and these forces are pulling with five, we're going to say units of pull, or, u or uh, force units, and seven, respectively. Um, so I'm going to put those there, do our little uh, arrows. Okay, so uh, where's our first step in uh, approaching this? Also, one thing I'd like to kind of point out is that you figure if you're pushing down on this, if you've got maybe like your hand leaning against this, if it's pushing downwards, well, then that's going to be kind of pulling on this joint and pushing that one in, right? It's going to be, um, to, use the, uh, to use the term that Dr. Christo would use, if you were to say, look at just this point, maybe this is like the center of a clock, and this whole block is the hand, if you push down this way, well then it's going to want to turn counterclockwise around this point. Um, 
So that's basically all that torque is, and we'll get to the actual calculations of that uh, in a little bit. Uh, first thing to do. Well, uh, we know that the... Uh, well, let's see, what do we know? Uh, we know that the vertical piece of this 5, the vertical piece goes right there, and that's going to be equal to what? Well, oh, I'm sorry, I left out one other piece of information. He said that this side was 3, uh, like 3 units tall, this side was 4, and this side was 4, and yeah. So then, uh, let's just, how about instead of, uh, putting in what all the sides are, let's just remember that this is our 37 degree angle that he uses all the time, and, uh, this is another 37 degree angle, this is the 37 degree angle. My, oops, whoa, I drew those lines in completely wrong. Uh, I actually drew in this line along this diagonal, when it should have been along that diagonal, so forgive me. Um, one sec, sorry, I gotta kind of fix that, because that's kind of a big difference, you know? Uh, there. So we're gonna make... Sorry. Blue. And green. Luckily I caught that early on, and not later on, because if I cut it later on, that would have been kind of confusing for a lot of people. Um, okay, so, uh, we've got... This is 3, this is 4, that's 4. The height is 3, right? So, this is that 3, 4, 5 triangle that he always uses. And just think, the side that's opposite the, uh, the side that's opposite the 3 is a 37 degree angle. So it's 37. But the thing is, you don't even really need to know that it's 37, because actually, um, well, I'll get to why in a sec. So here we look at this triangle, it's a 3, 4, 5, so the side, so the corner opposite the 3, that's a 37. Uh, here, again, I didn't write the numbers in, but we know that this is the same height as here, right? This is 3, this is 4, because again, that's the same length. So side opposite the 3, that's a 37. So we're just going to say that all those are 37 degree angles. And now, uh, once you've figured out uh, where the angles are, you want to get rid of all of these numbers, all of the, or rather, all of the heights and lengths, because those will honestly just confuse you. Um, but, uh, oh crap, I forgot to run my timer. Oh well. Um, we'll say I've been going for, what, five minutes, I guess? It's just a pain to uh, not lose track of how long I've been going for, because then uh, if, you t if I go too long, YouTube uh, cuts off my videos, or doesn't let me upload them. Which is, and I, uh, I could, um, I could kind of, uh, like, edit them and crap, but honestly, it's just easier to make new videos. <laughs> or, rather, it's easier to keep track of my time. So, I'm gonna go for about eight minutes after this point, and then make a new part of the video, even if I have extra time, because it's just less risky. Anyway, back to where I was at. We know that this angle right here, this angle, and this angle are all 37 degree angles. Um, so let's kind of just look at each of these sides and say, okay, sine of 37 is equal to, well, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. Well, this was 3, we had it written in here before, and this, we do Pythagorean theorem, it's 5. So sine of 37 equals 3 over 5, and that's just 0 0.6. And using the, uh, using the same logic, Cosine is the alternate over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 37 equals alternate over the hypotenuse. This was 4, if you remember. So it was 4 over 5, because the hypotenuse is 5. And that's equal to just 0 0.8. So that's, that's pretty simple, but writing this sine and cosine here, um, at least in cases where it is a 30, uh, 3, 4, 5 triangle, will, uh, it'll help you, because... Um, you won't have to type crap into your calculator. Because this is the only decimal slash fraction that he's looking for. And we may use one, we may use the other, depending on which is most convenient. 